So Moon Tree uh, was founded on three legs of art, nature, and spirituality. And, but really our emphasis is the interconnectedness of all three of those. So we take a holistic approach to our relationship with creative process, our relationship with the natural world around us, and our relationship with our own inner spirituality and being. My name is Matthew Selmer, and I'm the director at Moon Tree Studios. The first thing you'll notice is the rain gardens that are planted with um, native Indiana prairie plants. Uh, and then when you walk into the main gallery, uh, the first thing that I notice that you'll, everyone else will notice is the timber frame construction. Um, so when they designed the buildings, the thought process behind it was to mix old technology with new technology. Around the main gallery area where we have our exhibits are the clay studio, uh, which is um, a really good sized clay studio with two full size kilns in the firing room um, for firing the clay pieces and uh, four different uh, spinning wheels um, for uh, throwing on the wheel. What's really interesting about teaching here at Moon Tree is that anyone can come to this class. Some of them have already had previous experience working with clay, but then I might have students who have never touched clay before in their life, and so I need to find a way to kind of connect them with the material and do so in a way that it doesn't make them feel alienated, but make them feel connected. Because I want, the goal is that you leave here feeling successful in some way. This is more of a process-based kind of classroom where we are more interested in just creating this kind of like connective experience, you know, connecting students to the material and that creative process. So the outcome or the form that they're making that isn't the goal of the class. So. On the other side of the building is our paint studio, which is also a multi-purpose studio where we have a mini kiln for copper enameling and we do lots of process-oriented paint in there as well as um, watercolor, crayons, markers, basic drawing things, pretty much anything that you would want to do two-dimensional art-wise, um, the paint studio would be ideal for. And then past that is our fiber studio, where we have um, a bunch of um, looms as well as spinning wheels. We have a group of women that sit and spin uh, and meet here monthly. The whole idea of the artist residency program is for whether you're a starting artist or you've been an artist for 30 years, um, if you're at that place where you need a different space, a different setting to tap into um, the creative process, that's really what we want to foster. So Sharon, for instance, was working on a graphic novel and she found the, 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 the environment here conducive to her doing that work. And she was able to share a little bit about what she was working on. We had some of the sisters come, some of the people who live nearby, um, people who work at the mother house, um, the groundskeepers. It was a wonderful mix of people. Um, my name is Sharon Evans, and I am a teaching artist and a graphic novelist. So I live in Chicago. I live near Wrigley Field, and I, for seven years, taught improv to Chicago police officers and urban youth. So after this experience, I thought I'd like to write about this, and I decided to do a graphic novel. But the whole idea of having to do this was daunting. 
And then my friend, David Sisko, who is a Chicago artist, we went out for lunch and I told him about, oh, I have to do this really difficult puzzle work. And he said, I know the perfect place for you, Moon Tree. And my first um, night, I went right behind me and sat under there and just looked out. It just focused me, it centered me. And it, it also was a very uh, nurturing, it's been nice. And in fact, I was in my studio working and two sand cranes walked past my window. You know, they're like this tall. And they looked and then they, you know, continued on their walk. I mean, how can you not love that? Um, what they've done here is to create a place where you can relax and be productive, you know. So we have internships um, for people of all different ages, um, from high school to college to post-grad, and um, even professionals if they were interested. And in the same way with our residency program, we build our internship um, one individual at a time. So because the umbrella of Moon Tree is so broad, we like to find out what um, someone who's interested in internship is really passionate about or what are they trying to explore? It doesn't only feel like a place that I'm accepted, but it feels like a place that I'm wanted because anytime I would visit, everyone would not only welcome me, but be excited to hear that I was coming. And it's just something that felt like a part of me. And when I was gone, it felt like something was missing. And I can't imagine ever having a time in my life where I don't still come here because it just has become such an integral part of my life. I think it's good for people to realize that there are things like this close and they're a beautiful thing to easily integrate art into your life. When people come here, you're not just a customer. We're not trying to sell you a product, but we're trying to build a relationship with you and figure out what is it that you're passionate about. I really believe in the power of like collective consciousness and the dynamic that, and like the, you know, Gandhi's cliche of be the change you wish to see in the world. I, I think that that is really more powerful than we think it is. So even if like our individual actions aren't doing that much to affect the bigger picture, maybe what we're doing and how we're living spiritually and collectively does have an impact, it's like a drop of water in the ocean, like a ripple effect. The husband um, texted me back and he said, you know, I just got to let you know you made my wife cry. And I'm just like, you know, that is an awesome feeling. Not that you want to make people cry, but, you know, the emotion behind something that you made with your own hands um, can give somebody that much joy. And that's, that's pretty rewarding. So, hi, my name is Alfonso Rosas. Um, everyone calls me Fonz. I'm the owner and operator of Hamela Woodworks here in Plymouth. I worked in the automotive field for 15 years and I didn't see my family a whole lot. At the same time, our twin boys were born. I missed my kids' uh, first steps. Um, my, my sister was here um, babysitting for us and she sent me a, a video and I was like man you know that that sucks I was getting extremely stressed out and my wife was like you know 
if you don't start this soon, you probably won't ever do it. So I did. I jumped head first. And at that point, I gave my employer a week notice. I didn't see myself as an artist until I started getting commissions of, you know, people saying, you know, oh, I want a piece of furniture. Uh, I don't know what I want. Or, you know, I want a table. I don't know what kind of aesthetic I want. And they give you the freedom to do what, you know, you want to do for them or from their cues or their ideas, you build something, you know, without much input from a customer. And then I started to you know, see myself as like, you know, I guess this technically is a form of art considering, you know, it's, it's designs that I come up with or I, I've even gotten this before, you know, it's not what I expected, but it's perfect. And that's when I was like, okay, yeah, this is definitely a form of art. I would say the best thing about Marshall County or Plymouth in general, it's just a really central city to all these other bigger cities. And that's the, the biggest thing is I don't have to travel, you know, hours and hours to look for, you know, clients that, you know, are looking for those pieces of furniture that support an artist doing this. <laughs> There's two parts of the process of any kind of furniture that is, is really, really enjoyable is, you know, once you start sanding some of the features on wood, they start to come up. And this is any woodworker, they'll, they'll t tell you the same thing. You know, as soon as you apply the finish, you really see what that piece of furniture is gonna look like, or even like the top of a table. You know, you finish that first and you're like, oh wow, okay, this is really gonna look cool. Applying the finish is, is really one of the steps where you're just like, man, this is definitely why I do this. Okay, so we moved in here in, in 1997. This was a pool hall. Um, I built the front and we rented it out and I moved my studio into the back and I started painting because I need to paint. It, you, you, just, you just need to do art. Um, but I also have this passion because I love artists and I love individuals and I love the whole creativity that comes with the artist's world. And so I moved my art collection in here also and built some racks and, and, and put a few paintings on them. Um, and so 26 years later, um, there are close to 600 paintings and drawings and photographs um, all over the inside of this room. Having that is not for me. Having that is to share it with as many people as possible. And at a certain point, uh, we decided that one of the retirement gigs that we would do is do a gallery. And, there, and there's a couple reasons for that. One, of the, one reason is that uh, I was fortunate enough to spend my early years in teaching, teaching in Dayton, Ohio at the Dayton Art Institute. So when you teach kids with actual artworks, you're giving them a gift that they won't get from anywhere else. And so I've, I've patterned my life after that. I've considered myself an artist teacher and my reason for, for being that was that as a practicing artist, I could share and connect to what kids do when they make art. But as a, as a, as a teacher, I could then draw on what I know about art and give that back to them. And so when we thought about the gallery, the idea was how could we continue to do 
what my wife and I had done with children. And so we decided to open a gallery, call it the Unintended Curator, and it was our way of giving back. If you look at art as some sort of esoteric, uh, upper level thinking, and think that it only happens among those who study and those who are elite, um, you're really missing the boat. The truth is, in the human genome, every one of us has this spark of life that connects us to art. And years ago, we had been given a painting at, the, at, the, uh, at Culver Academies by a naive artist. And I was like, oh, this is very exciting. Let's hang this on the wall. And I put it up on the wall. And I had a couple of teachers say, what's that doing on the wall? That, that person's not trained. That's, that's not good. You know, how, and I said, well, let me explain this work to you. And it was by actually an, an, an international artist who was a naive painter. And the work w was beautiful. And when I finally explained it to them, they were like, oh, well, that's why you're the, the curator. And, uh, and, and then one of my bosses said, what would it take in order to get an exhibition of naive art and, and in order to teach this to students? And I said, well, you know, it can be $10,000 and we'll go out and we'll borrow pieces from different institutions. And they said, ah, sorry, that isn't going to happen. And, but if you ever find an exhibition, um, feel free to bring it to me. So several years later, I was on, um, uh, for some reason, I was on Craigslist. And there was a painting of a naked lady lion tamer with, with lions around her and a glass of wine in her hand, twirling a, a hoop or a whip. And I looked at it and I said, oh my gosh, that's a naive painting. I've got to see this. And so I called the owner and he said, oh, I've got a lot of them. Um, you know, why don't you come up? So I drove all the way up to Chicago and went to this storefront. And, and when I walked in, the whole place was full of art. And I said to him, what's your price? And he gave me a price and I started laughing. I thought, oh my God. <laughs> and I said, no, nah, I don't think we're going to do that. And so I bought a smaller piece off and by another artist and I left. And as I'm driving back from Chicago, I thought, Someday I'm going to read about this artist and I'm going to say, man, I missed that one. I could have had it. And by the time I got home, I told my wife a story and my wife looked at me and she looked at all the pictures on my cell phone and she said, if anyone could tell this guy's story, you could. And so I raided my IRA and we bought the entire collection. And the school agreed to allow me to do a show. And that was in 2014. It took me four years to research who Roman Gala was. And what I found out about him was he was an amazing character. I mean, he was born in 1917. He was caught in a Nazi roundup in Poland and sent to France to make airplane parts during World War II. And in 1951, having been released from this camp and Living back in Poland, he decides he's going to come to America and he comes to Chicago because what Polish person doesn't know somebody in Chicago? And he gets a job. He's a chess player. He actually ends up playing in the um, chess open, the, uh, the, the U.S. Open chess tournament. And in 1964, having been here for over 10 years, still single, still working, playing in the chess community, he suddenly wakes up one day and says, I think I'm an artist. And he starts painting pictures. And when he becomes a painter, of course, he turns to chess periodically in the paintings that he does. But only in you know, really special moments. And this was a particular win that Roman had in 1978 that was, was he painted it in a manner that, that tells the entire story, okay? 
So, so when I talked to one of his friends, um, his friend told me, he said, now, have you seen the painting? Because I, we had bought all the paintings and we had them here. He said, have you seen the painting that has the chess conundrum on it? And I said, what, what, chess conundrum? He said, yeah, Roman, Roman always wanted, he said he was a magician in the way that he did things. And, and uh, he painted one piece that a chess player could look at that chess board and read it and realize that, 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 that Roman is in trouble. So I found the painting and I realized there was even more to the story. So it reads from right to left, kind of backward from the way that we do things. Way on the right, Roman comes in the door. He's the magician, he's going to the chess tournament. Lady Chess or Lady Wynn brings him in and she ushers him through and then she appears again and she says, don't pay any attention to these distractions. These dancing girls, these music girls, don't pay any attention to this. You're here to play chess. You're going to win. You're going to do this. And so Roman sits down at the chessboard, and the person he's playing is a sorceress. And he gets into a conundrum. And if you look close at Roman, he's got his hands out, and it's like, ah, this is it. And she is focused on the board. He doesn't know what to do. Roman appears again down below her with a bottle in his hand. And it's as if this whole experience of this conundrum of how do I get out of this makes him woozy. And then the next time we see him, he is almost in a, a container. It's like he has to think, he has to focus. He blots out everything that's around him. And when you go to the corner, there's Roman and he's won the bride. And if you look very closely at the book, all of the chess moves that he made in order to win and beat the conundrum are listed right in order. And so the whole entire story is about how Roman has had this experience of, of this struggle for a game that he loves. And he said that chess itself is such a wonderful game, but it's a trap. But once you get into it, once you learn to love it, it's a trap that you will play for the rest of your life. And, and that's what the painting's about. One of the things that I like to do is I like to, to to, to look at art wherever it is. And when, when you go into people's homes, oftentimes they'll have one piece that's important to them, one exciting piece. And um, one of the things that I began to realize is, is that there is a kind of intrinsic hunger that people have for beauty. And we, 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 we take care of that problem in in as many ways as we possibly can, whether it's by cooking a great meal, setting a beautiful table, or, or, or having furniture in your house that you know, is, is comfortable to, to sit on while you, you watch the tube. And those things in and of themselves kind of lead toward raising the level of awareness of what I would consider the purpose of art. And the purpose of art is for artists to communicate something about their world to others. And I have found that there are very few people who do not get excited by looking at art. And that's what art should do for people. And so in opening this gallery, we want people to experience something that is magical here in Marshall County that connects them to, to art and, and, and perhaps even a sense of beauty. That's, that's important. And, and you know, yes, this is a gallery. We, we have to make a little bit of money in order to keep the door open. Um, but it's, it's, it's more important to me that people come in here and enjoy what they see, and if they 
go out and find a piece of art somewhere else, that's great. Because for everyone in Marshall County to have an original piece of art in their house, wouldn't that be simply amazing? So much of what we accept does not have to be controlled by budget. And, and, and Walmart has these mass duplicated artworks. Uh, Lowe's has the mass duplicated artworks. You can buy things to hang on your wall. Yeah, and, and if you enjoy them, I would suggest you do that. But to tap into the creative life of the community, to have original art, and to raise your children with art in their environment, that's an incredible gift. And that's, that's our goal. Our goal is to, to lift up in some way the common life that we all lead and to bring a sense of beauty to it through art. Hi, I'm Jeffrey Baumgartner. I'm the director of the Culver Paint Out. And this is our very first year of what we anticipate a biannual event every two years. This is a three day plein air uh, event. We have about 40 artists joining us from all over the country. They registered on Friday at 8 a.m. They will paint all day on Friday, all day on Saturday, Sunday morning until about noon. And they can paint uh, all around Culver, Indiana, um, and in Marshall County uh, locations. And we are, I'm looking out the windows right now, at beautiful Lake Max and Cucky, which happens to be the second largest natural lake here in, uh, in Indiana. And it is absolutely gorgeous. So these painters, uh, are going to paint all these locations. They are literally here on Saturday morning. They are out with an air gun start 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Uh, a quick paint is a two hour, in this instance, a two hour here at the farmer's market right on the lakefront. They can paint anything they want to. Um, and then they turn that in uh, at 12.30 and that gets adjudicated specific to the awards for quick paint. So we're really excited about this first event, the Culver Paint Out, Culver, Indiana, and uh, look forward to telling you more about it and maybe you can join us, thanks so much. This is a, uh, what we call a plein air painting event. Plein air means painting outdoors. It's a French term. And uh, the act of, or the, yeah, I guess the act of painting in plein air has become a recent phenomenon uh, around the globe, actually. And uh, so these kind of events where artists get together and paint in plein air are happening quite often. And um, I'm a professional artist. My name is Rick Wilson. And I travel and do painting events across the country. And uh, so that's why I'm here in Culver, Indiana, the, uh, the f first Culver paint out. And we've got a great turnout by many uh, artists from several different states. So right now, the piece I'm working on, I'm trying to hustle and get it done in less than two hours because judging begins. This is a juried event and we have uh, judges that come in and, and uh, judge the work. Doing a painting of Lake Maxenkucky. 
And uh, actually, what I'm doing is a skyscape that has Lake Max and Cucky in, in, in the uh, scene. Kind of a gray day today, so uh, the, we don't have the, the blue water that everybody wants to see in, in uh, lake painting. So I'm gonna make this painting about the great shapes of clouds we have today. I love painting skies. Hi, my name is Steve Putrick. I'm an artist from Chicago, Illinois, and uh, I'm here in Culver, Indiana, enjoying the week of painting. We have a uh, we have a great variety of subject matter here to paint that reminds me of New England quite a bit. It's a beautiful environment, wide variety of subject matters to paint from rural farmland to lush green pastures uh, from uh, gorgeous homes along the lake to uh, quaint little town scenes of uh, shops and uh, uh, it's just a wide variety of, of uh, park settings as well. The people here are, are wonderful, so warm and, and uh, welcoming of artists. Uh, we're staying at a beautiful home here uh, along the uh, the Academy Boulevard, and uh, it's uh, it's a place we'll definitely return. Mm -hmm. 